Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. We're finishing off the profession guide here, so let's get right into it. In part 1, we covered all of the gathering professions, and also alchemy, blacksmithing, and engineering. And today, we're finishing it off with enchanting, leatherworking, tailoring, the secondary professions, and at the end, I'll also give you my personal picks for each class. Starting off here though, let's talk about enchanting. Enchanters buff up your gear with stat boosts and even weapon procs. Today, it's just rings and weapons pretty much, but in Classic, you'll find that you have a plethora of different slots that you can enchant your gear with. Your cloak, your chest, bracers, gloves, boots, your shield, and weapons are all enchantable with a variety of boons. And even what you enchant is much more diverse. Not just main stats like agility or strength, but also things such as spell power, increased mana, healing power, mana regeneration, defense skill, dodge chance, elemental resistances, stealth, fishing skill? Remember earlier when I said that these professions are much more substantial? It's ridiculous how many enchants there are, and you'll make a lot of friends if you go to the trouble of tracking down all of the rare patterns. And of course, copious amounts of gold. The only guy I knew who hit the gold cap back in vanilla, which I believe was 214,000, was an enchanter. He was sort of the extreme because he was in the number one guild for a faction. This was back when enchanting patterns dropped off of high level raid bosses. Particularly, you'll find a bunch in the AQ40 raid when that unlocks. So at the time, the supply was very limited, and for those who know basic economics, know that having a monopoly equates to tons of gold. I'm a believer that the raids will be cleared much quicker this time around, so I don't think it'll be as extreme, but I mean, you can only clear them once a week still. Regardless, it'll be a good moneymaker, especially if you know what you're doing. Some popular enchants would be Crusader, which was a strength proc for melee. You needed Righteous Orbs, which you got from the Stratholme dungeon mainly. I spent quite a while in that place just for those, and Agility was a good one for Hunters and for the offhands of Rogues. And you also have spell power and healing power for the casters, and all of those various stat increases I listed earlier. And they can also make weapon oils, which are sort of the equivalent to the blacksmith's sharpening stones and weight stones. These increase spell power and spell crit for caster DPS, or mana per 5 and healing power for healers. Something to note here is that this is before the advent of Vellums. You can't simply enchant one and throw it on the auction house. To enchant someone's gear, you have to put it in the do not trade window, and you enchant it from there. A downside obviously is that it's a little more cumbersome, but a plus is that it promotes more interaction between players, which is one of the main aspects you'll find with the game. I actually prefer it this way, if you ask me. You may be wondering what profession to pair this one with, as herbing, mining, and skinning aren't related. Usually it's tailoring, and that's because it's really the only self-sufficient crafting profession. You get the materials for tailor just by looting cloth, and you can make green items to disenchant to stock up on enchanting materials, but we'll talk more about that later. Next up though, we have leatherworking. This is the leather and male counterpart to the blacksmith, of course aimed for the shaman, rogue, and druid, and hunter, and you can also make some miscellaneous stuff such as quivers and ammo pouches for the hunters, and a selection of cloaks. Similar to the blacksmith, you have a variety of resistance gear that you can craft, which will be crucial in raiding. The fashion is... questionable, but hey, it gets the job done I suppose. On a serious note though, you're gonna want at least one of these in your guild to equip everyone with the proper gear, whether it be for fire, frost, or nature resistance. They also made the Anixia skill cloak, which as I mentioned earlier, is required for the Nefarian fight in the Blackwing Lair. They can also make armor kits to upgrade your chest, legs, hand, or feet gear slots, the most useful of which being the core armor kit, which provides a boost to defense, but you need a rare pattern for that from the Molten Core raid. Aside from that though, you just have a bunch of good gear in general that you can make for leveling or the early endgame. They have a few sets here and there that'll be best in slot for that pre-raid gearing. It's also another profession that's split up into three specialties, and that's Tribal, Elemental, and Dragon Skill Leatherworking, each catering to certain classes. Elemental and Tribal are for leatherwares, so druids and rogues here. 
Usually, uh, agility warriors go for tribal, mainly because of the Devil Sar set, but you also have the Corehound belt pattern, which is your fire resist intellect belt. And as for elemental, you have the Storm Shroud set. I think tanking druids used a couple pieces of this, although it's not too great, so don't get too crazy with that. And you also have more fire resist gear in general, which is handy, but they're also quite expensive to make, so it's kind of rough. Again though, I'll have links to each recipe for these in the description. And dragon skill is your male specialization, so hunters and shamans here. Here's some examples of what they can make. So the biggest strength of leatherworking is going to be that resistance gear. It really depends on how much you value that initial gearing process, I guess. Maybe when the game first launches, you put more value in it, but as the game progresses and better raids come out, that balance is going to shift more and more away from these pre-raid items. Although that's not entirely true, as there are some patterns to be released with certain raids. As for gold making, just the gear in general is going to be your money maker. As I mentioned, they have certain items that are early best in slot for certain classes. One of their more powerful ones being that Devil Sword 2 piece set, which I showed in the tribal section. I remember that rogues always wanted this before stepping into raiding. And you also have that core armor kit that I mentioned earlier. Now the pattern for this isn't easy. It's a drop from the Molten Core raid, so it might take a while. But once you get in, it'll be one of the more steady ways of earning gold as a leather worker. Of course, the earlier you get it, the better. I also mentioned earlier that engineers could make leather workers a salt shaker. Using this and some deep rock salt, every three days you can create some refined salt, which you need for cured rugged hide, which is used for a variety of recipes. Since it's on a cooldown, it gains some value, so it's another thing you can just pop once every three days for some easy gold. One of the ultimate lazy man methods would be to have a bunch of alchemists and leather workers and have just one character's herbing and alchemy to feed yourself materials to level all of it, and just keep spamming these cooldowns for some near passive gold. It is easier said than done, since leveling is so time consuming in Classic, but hey, there it is. And lastly, for non-gathering professions, we have the tailor, which is everything to do with cloth. Armor, bags, and also the cosmetic shirts. In terms of gear, we have a similar story going on with leatherworking, you have a ton of resistance gear, which is always going to be crucial. Fire, frost, and nature, and a bunch of leveling and general raiding gear. Some items of note are the Robe of the Void for Warlocks, True Faith Vestments, the Robes of the Archmage, and the Robes of Winter Knight are some of the higher level craftables, to name just a few. You also have things like the Spider Belt, which is quite handy for PvP, so that'll be a good money maker. The main difference this time is that tailoring doesn't have any sort of specialization to spec into, which sets it apart from blacksmithing and leatherworking. So a little less depth I think, but also more freedom since you can learn every single pattern. It just depends on your perspective I guess. They also of course make bags, which are always in high demand. We did get some profession bags in vanilla, such as the herb satchels and enchanting bags and whatnot, and even soul shard bags for the warlocks but also the normal bags, obviously. Your biggest one being the bottomless bag, which requires a rare pattern and a ton of materials, but again, if you can get the pattern, you're all set. As for gold making, the bag market is going to be your most steady source of income. Certain pieces of gear will be in higher demand than others, especially in the pre-raid gearing, and as these raids release, you can bet on resistance gear, always seeing a surge in activity. And they do also have a cooldown mechanic like alchemists and leather workers. This time it's moon cloth. Every four days you can purify two fell cloths into one moon cloth, and this is used for a variety of high level gear, and also that bottomless bag that I mentioned earlier. So another good choice for the lazy man's way of earning gold. The only caveat here is that you can only craft it at these moon wells, which are located throughout the world. Not as hardcore as the Alchemy Lab though, since it's all outdoor content, so it's all soloable. And lastly for this video, I'd like to cover the secondary professions. These are professions that everyone can and should get. You don't need to choose between these or anything else, and there are no downsides to learning them. And that's cooking, fishing, and first aid. Talking about cooking and fishing here first, these really go hand in hand. Cooking was pretty much designed to be leveled from fishing, so you definitely want to have both of these. For fishing, you, well, 
You fish. It's pretty self-explanatory. In Classic, it's more time-consuming. Over the years, they've sped up fishing to make it more appealing to players, but in Classic, you'll find that your cast bar moves much more slowly, so it requires a lot more patience. But it's also important because, like I said, you use it to level cooking, and there are also some fish that you need for alchemy, so if you took that profession, that's all the more reason to learn and level this. And there's also the Strangle Thorn Vale Fishing Tournament, which has some unique prizes tied to it. This is, of course, the weekly fishing extravaganza, where everyone rushes to the Stranglethorn Vale Zone and race to collect 40 speckled tasty fish. The first person to turn them in gets some nifty rewards. It's always quite a fun and hectic time, even more so in Classic, since the traveling options are much more limited. There's also the Gazrenka boss in the Zulkar upgrade. You need fishing to summon them, so you'll want to bring at least one Master Angler along with you when you step foot into this place. You can also fish up some Rumsey Rum, which is an alcohol buff. You can have one alcohol buff in Classic, and this is the best stamina one, giving you 15 for 15 minutes. And as for cooking, food buffs are still a thing in Classic, just as important back then as they are now, and some popular ones will be the grilled squid for agility wares, which, what do you know, the materials for which require fishing. The smoked desert dumplings for strength users, and you also have Dirge's Kickin' Chimerak Chops for your stamina, but you'll only get the recipe for this once the AQ40 event starts. There really aren't any huge differences between current and classic as far as its main functionality goes. You cook food, and you get food buffs. Pretty simple. For both cooking and fishing, the gold making potential is quite high, as there'll always be people who are too lazy to cook their own food, or alchemists who don't want to level fishing. You can always make money by selling high-end stat food, or just the raw fish. Fishing is actually pretty powerful in the fact of how simple it is. You don't need any special recipes, or flip anything on the auction house. You just need a bit of patience, that's all. Heck, you don't even need to be high level. There are low-level fish that you can make a killing off of, and if you want to afford your mount training by 40, this will probably be one of the best professions for that. And as for first aid, this is now actually removed from the current game, and not only is it present in Classic, but it's actually extremely vital, even if you're a healing class. This profession is based around the use of bandages and anti-venom, and it serves as a way for on-the-fly healing no matter the class. I say that this is more important simply due to the lack of overall self-healing in the Classic game. Today, every single class has a way of healing themselves. The Crimson Vial for rogues, Victory Rush for Warriors, or Acceleration for Hunters, and so on. In Classic, however, you don't have any of this stuff, so any form of healing is going to be that much more valuable. It's the reason why it was removed in the current game. Once everyone got all of those self-heals, no one really used first aid anymore. You can bandage not only yourself, but also other players, as long as neither of you are getting hit, so it's mainly used out of combat, or when the enemy's attention is elsewhere. And this is of course multiplied 10 times over in PvP. As a rogue, your wombo combo will be to blind your opponent, and get off a full bandage before you re-stealth. And the same for mages with polymorph, warlocks with fear, and so on. Its gold making potential, as you'd guess, is next to nothing. You need first aid for the bandages, so the demand really isn't there. But that's about it. In summary, you've probably gathered just how much more depth and impact these professions used to have. To kill Nefarian, you needed a healthy stock of Anixia skill cloaks, and to make the cloaks you needed a leather worker, but to learn the recipe, you need to kill her first and turn in her head, and to get the scales you need a skinner, but to skinner you need a special dagger, which only drops off a level 60 boss. And that's not even getting into all of the resist gear that you can only craft, or the creation of the legendaries, Thunder Fury, or the Hand of Ragnaros. Whether it be from going into certain specializations, or getting those ultra-rare patterns, you can really spend a lot of time honing your professions and exploring what they have to offer. They also promote more interaction in general, from things like the lack of vellums, so only trade window enchants, to flasks requiring alchemy labs, which of course you need other players to clear to, but also in the sense that many of your recipes will need items from other professions. You need enchanted leather to make this item, so okay, I need to find a skinner and an enchanter then. That, combined with the more time-consuming leveling and thus fewer alts, 
It promotes a much more social experience where you have to network with other master craftsmen and it has quite a big effect on the community as a whole. And another thing just really quickly here is that the way you train these professions is also a bit different. Back then they were split up into four levels and that's apprentice, journeyman, expert, and artisan. And each of these increased your maximum skill by 75 up to the base maximum which is 300 and they each have the following level requirements. Some trainers are quite hidden or require quests to unlock, like the ones tied to those certain specializations for example, but I won't go super in depth there because this video is already way too long, but I did kind of gloss over that earlier so I just thought I'd mention it really quickly here. And I did say that I wanted to give my personal picks for each class. Keep in mind that this is just me. A lot of this is really just based on preference and how much you care about min-maxing both PvE and PvP. Speaking of which though, if you really do want to min-max, you're going to want to pick up engineering. With enchanting, alchemy, or blacksmith and so on, you don't really need those professions to get benefits from them for the most part. You just need to pay more gold to other players for the consumables or enchants or whatever, but for engineer, you need it to be able to use all of their bombs and whatnot. For PvP, you're mostly interested in the ones that have AoE incapacitates, and also some of the gadgets such as the Death Ray or the Rocket Helmet to name just two. And for PvE, you want that Sapper Charge for that AoE damage, and maybe the Battle Chicken for the group wide speed buff if you're willing to sacrifice that trinket slot. In terms of performance in raids and PvP, Engineer is going to be a must if you care about min maxing, so I'll just throw that out there. And this goes for every single class too. But let's assume that you don't care about that, in which case my personal choices would be this, and keep in mind this is assuming you're just picking one class here. Like you probably don't want more than one enchanter across your entire account, right? But for cloth wares, I just go for tailoring and enchanting. Tailoring is pretty self-explanatory. You can make a lot of your own gear leveling up, and some nice early endgame items if you get the patterns, and also bags for gold. Enchanting is nice as well, not only for yourself, but also for making some gold. You can always play the auction house and find some cheap greens and flip them into essences for a profit, or just have one character to send all your greens to from all of your alts to keep yourself stocked up. For the rogue, I actually like herbalism and alchemy. Alchemy is good for any class really, but my mindset here for rogue is that their thistle tea and their blinding powder both require certain herbs. You need Swift Thistle for the tea, and Fade Leaf for the blinding powder, so having Herbalism and Alchemy just gives them more synergy, and it saves you some gold off of the auction house. You can choose to go leatherworking and skinning if you want, but I prefer that on a druid just to optimize things. Obviously the mindset here is with druids being leatherwares, you can make some of your own gear. Leatherworker is sort of thought of as the weakest profession of them all, but that may also be their strength. It'll probably be more rare, so things should balance out. And again, that Anixia skill cloak is going to be a must. I do also have alchemy and herbing for shaman as well for you horde players out there. Again though, leatherworking and skinning also isn't a bad choice. Same logic for the druid really. For the hunter, I have engineer and mining. Not really for the guns since most of the good endgame weapons are actually bows for the most part, but just because hunters have that dead zone in classic. If enemies get too close to you, you can't shoot them, so I see those grenades as being vital for them more so than the other classes. And again, remember, even if you don't use guns, you do have those trade-ins for arrows in your major cities. And lastly, for paladin and warrior, I have good old mining and blacksmithing. Pretty self-explanatory here. Big heavy plate melee classes having professions that make big heavy plate and melee weapons. Really though, for any of these classes, you could also interchange alchemy and herbalism since those are sort of one size fits all professions. For gold making, as I said, I really like that lazy man's approach, so if you really wanted to go ham with that and level a bunch of characters, you can pick up either alchemy, leatherworking, or tailoring on all of your characters for those cooldowns. And of course one character having herbalism and skinning to serve as a farmer to level them all up. With this method, you can just keep track of your timers and flip items from the auction house or trade chat for that one click profit. It will take about 4 years to get going, although to learn the artisan level of these professions you only need level 35, so maybe not as time consuming as most would think. 
But that's about it. I know that these videos are way longer than they needed to be. It's kind of funny how I always set out for these videos to be catered towards beginners, and they always end up being nearly an hour long. I think it just goes to show just how much depth they have in Classic. But if you thought I skipped over some stuff, and you'd like a more in-depth guide profession by profession, I highly recommend the YouTube channel Frostadamus, because he's covered every single one pretty thoroughly. I'll have a link to the playlist in the description for you. I hope that this gave you a good overall look at the professions as a whole though, and that it helped you narrow down your choices. If it did, I do have other guides aimed towards beginners that you may find handy. I have one for class picking, and two more for race picking for both the Horde and Alliance, and I'll have those linked in the description if you're curious. Anyways, I hope you found the video helpful, like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.